Okay, so it's a miserable weekend, so we're not going sailing, and I've just moved the dinghy, um, our inflatable dinghy, because, um, uh, well, for because. But it's made me realise that, um, was it three or four years ago now, uh, we had to repair this dinghy because the valves um, that seal each of the three chambers were broken, and it was more significant than just the valve, it was the bit that was inside the dinghy that was broken. So I fixed it by cutting the valve out effectively, um, putting a patch around it and screwing the, um, the new valve on top of it. And it was quite a while ago and in the comments there were a few people saying, oh it's high load area, perhaps you should have cut a hole in the bottom and done it from inside. Well I thought I'd show you um, how this stood up. Uh, and basically it's worked perfectly. The, um, as you can see the glue lines kind of exposed around it that's probably me just not doing a very good job or it might be that the patch has shrunk a little bit more than the area that I marked off I don't know but the valve has been perfect we not only did that one I don't know if we did that one first or then we did that one but either way we have to do two of the three valves and they both work perfectly we've never had any problems the repair has been 100% the only valve that gives us any trouble is the original one that stood in the boat. One day I might cut that one out as well and put a new valve in there. The problem is that there doesn't seem to be an industry standard on these valves. Um, the valves this dinghy originally came with weren't available when I uh, ordered spares. So I ordered a spare and then when I needed to get another spare I couldn't get exactly the same one again. So I now have three different valves. Fortunately when I ordered a new one I ordered two. So when I had to get the next one, uh, rather than fit that one and have no spares, I ordered another one. So I now have one is spare for each of these valves and there's two for the original one because I've got obviously the ones that were in it originally. Um, but so that, I thought I'd film that because it might be of interest to people that watched the original film. And for those of you that didn't watch the original film of me repairing this, I'll tag it on the end of this film so you can see what we're talking about. The real reason for me doing this film is to show you something I've never showed you. Right, this is the underside of the dinghy, that's the front. Starboard side, tiny patch here. Now that, on paper at least, is the worst dinghy repair patch ever, but two things happened. One is, it was right near the seam. There were two little pinprick holes right near the seam. So I thought I'll stick that little patch on, then I will stick a big patch over the top of all of it so that um, I've got good coverage. Because they all tell you, you've got to make sure you've got you know, I don't know, 50 millimeters around the edge or whatever, so you need a big patch. Except when I came to do this, I still had the tin of adhesive that I'd used to put the other patches on. It was, I don't know, to be fair to the manufacturers, it was probably best part of a year old. But it had only been done those two patches, and you get a big tin, it lasts a long time. Um, so I took it out, I cut that little patch, and I took the, the uh, tin out of the boat, and the hardener bit, or the, the small bit you put a couple of drips in with, uh, it just disappeared, it evaporated, dra drained away, bad seal on the lid, I don't know what it was, it disappeared. Um, and I couldn't buy that little pot on its own. Um, and we were out and about, and I needed to use a dinghy, so I thought, I oh, know, I'll just try. I think it's a PVC. If we watch the original one, it'll tell you which, ma uh, which material it is. I think it's PVC. Um, and all the adhesives for this type of dinghy are a two-part adhesive. Um, anyway, I used just a big goopy wet, you know, the main stuff. I spread it on there. I did follow the instructions like normal. So you put it on, you leave it for 20 minutes, don't dry. You put another coat on, you leave it 20 minutes dry. Then you put another coat on, on both bits, obviously. And then you finally push the patch together and you rub it out and you leave it to dry. So anyway, that little patch hasn't had the two part adhesive, it's just had one part of it stuck on and I didn't bother putting the big one on the top because I fully expected that to fall off. Anyway, that's, uh, if it was four years for the valves, that's been on there for three years and that has never leaked or let us down at all. Like I say, it's the other side that loses air if it loses anything. That has been brilliant. So I'm not suggesting you can get away with putting small patches on holes. I think I've just been lucky in that respect. But what I will point out is that that little tin of a little bit of the adhesive, I bet most people buy new tins of this goo because it's the little first part, as it is, that dries up and disappears and eva uh, di um, evaporates or whatever. And the manufacturers are selling a lot of glue that they don't need to sell. All you need is that main tin of stuff 
and and it works can't tell you why someone may be in the comments because comments are now enabled if you're watching this and you know different tell me why that shouldn't have worked but I've now got two big tins of goo kind of thing because I bought one for the hardener for, for doing the second part I think um, uh, no hardener if that's the right way around activator and they work fine just thought I'd let you know anyway I'm Ian this is sailing with the Foxhall family hopefully we'll be sailing next week I don't know um, but even anyway if you missed the original um, me fixing this dinghy repair stay off the credits and I'll reshow it so you can see what we're talking about thanks for watching Something a bit different this week, dinghy repairs. Not our normal dinghy though. Um, we don't normally bother with an inflatable because we um, we don't live too far from the club so we just tow our rigid dinghy down to the club when we need to use a dinghy and um, we can't go that far from here anywhere where we really benefit from going ashore and stuff so we don't bother it. But we're about to hopefully head off up the east coast like we do this time of year and have a cruise um, and Having Winnie and Izzy um, and us, we end up normally spending our time in marinas, but we thought it would be much better if we took an inflatable with us and we can drop anchor, stay away a bit more, um, and make more use of the uh, all the creeks and, and rivers and that around the east coast. So, our father-in-law has this nice wave line dinghy that he's only had for a couple of years, um, which is he sold to us. Great, we'll use that, we thought. Except when we actually came to unpack it, the valve, there's three chambers, one on each side and a chamber on the front, um, that valve is broken. Um, so I googled it and sure enough um, there's some YouTube films and that about people replacing the valve but all they replace is that bit and if that was the only bit that was broken it wouldn't be such a problem although it's still a problem because Waveline haven't got that valve in stock. They've only got ugh, this one, which although fundamentally is exactly the same, works the same way, that bit doesn't screw into that bit, so you can't use it anyway. But it's worse than that, because the bit, this bit, that's inside, is broken as well. And as is the nature, this works by, you know, you poke that bit through the hole that's in the, uh, the rubber, that bit goes on the other side and it clamps it, so that's what clamps the valve tight against the um, tight against the you know the sides of the dinghy and makes the seal except of course um, that also means then the bit that clamps up on the inside won't come through the hole because that's the whole point if it came through the hole it wouldn't clamp would it so I've got to get it out um, and after much head scratching and talking to people decided the only way that's going to come out is if we cut the hole and make it bigger um, and if we do that, um, so I figure, so I figure if someone's going to cut a hole and make it bigger, might as well try and be me. So what I've done, oh, is bought a PVC dinghy repair kit and some PVC repair, whatever you want to call this, and I'm hoping that if I cut a nice round disc out of this and um, cut a hole in the middle of it and if I cut the hole that's in the dinghy put some sort of star cuts in it or whatever so that I can now just about get the plug out when I come to put it back together I'll put the new bit inside I'll then use my round patch that I've cut out of this to stick over around the outside, then screw the parts together and then the valve we've still got the rubber to seal against and we'll glue it all down and that make the seal.
So, that's the old bit out. Now I've got to get a new bit back, bit back in. As you saw, I've only cut the slits like as small as I could get away with, and with that broken, and this is actually slightly smaller, it just about came out. I suspect I'm not going to be as lucky getting a new one in, but as smaller I can make those, the more chance there is of the, the, the lip on this valve clamping over the bits I've cut, and obviously therefore then the patch as well, sealing it and keeping it all stuck and, um, and airtight. We'll keep going. <laughs> it's a lot harder getting the new one back in because you've got when you're pulling it out you can just pull against it and hold it in it. When you're trying to push it in you kind of can't hold it to push against. And I am not going to cut this hole any bigger unless I really have to. Okay, I'll give in. Hey! So it's in. Gonna try a dry fit now to see um see what it's like. Okay, well the good news is is it's in okay and apart from a couple of tiny bits where you can just about see the, the cut I made, you can't really see it so as long as my patch covers them up and seals them, hopefully the, the valve itself will keep some integrity in the joint. All I've got to do is stop the air getting out. <laughs> That's all you got to do, stop the air getting out. Find something now to cut round. So, I've drawn round a roll of sellotape and the lid off of a tube of Izzy suntan lotion and it looks kind of like that and I'm just going to cut that out and try it dry fit again Looking good so far. Well, I guess that's the easy bit. Now I need to go and read some instructions and find out how this uh, adhesive works. It's IBS Boat Supplies PVC Inflatable Boat Adhesive Part 2 and that's presumably Part 1 so <coughs> so I've traced around my patch where it's going to go on the hull and I'm now going to stick masking tape on it because with this adhesive apparently you mix two parts together and then you spread it on both surfaces let it dry, do it a couple more times, then you push it together. So obviously you don't really want adhesive on the things that don't need adhesive. Right, the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to degrease it with acetone, which is almost certainly the wrong stuff to use. Because acetone is pretty evil stuff and it melts most things. But I did put some on this little bit I cut out and it looks and feels okay because um, the one good thing with acetone is if it doesn't destroy the dinghy it will get the grease off certainly getting the pen marks off
Blimey, unlike most things you buy like this, it's actually filled to the brim. It's proper goopy stuff. It's like um, it's like a runny treacle. Properly put, stinky. <laughs> Don't know what this stink is, but cleaning the can up is taking the ink off the sticker. It's obviously potent stuff. Okay, this is filled to the brim as well. Whew, just a stinky. So a 20 for that is just a drip. Now I'm not a chemist, so perhaps someone could help me with this, but I'm guessing at 20 to 1, all you need is a bit of the chemical to start the reaction, and once it starts, it will just continue throughout, as opposed to two parts of the same adhesive or something. But again, if someone understands this stuff and can explain what's going on, please do. So I didn't mix too much up, because we've got to do three coats of this, and I don't know how long it's going to last or whatever, so let's... Um, Spread it on. Well. First bit done. I've put the tin away now, but I think it said wait 20 minutes. So it's 20 minutes later, and I've just mixed up some more of this adhesive. Although, to be honest, the stuff that was still in the pot was still runny. Well, not runny, it's never runny, it's jelly like, but it was still jelly like, even though it's clearly gone off on the things I spread it on thinly. So, I might have been able to just use what was still in the pot. But I thought, rather than take a chance, I'd mix some new up. Again, if anyone out there knows, let us know. Anyway, the instructions say now, I've got to put it on again, another coat on, leave it two minutes, then spread another coat on, leave it two minutes, then I'll put them all together. So this is the second coat, but I am slightly puzzled here by the instructions because it's very, it, it was very clear, it said 20 minutes for the first coat, then it said by two more coats, two minutes between each coat. And then it says, when the surfaces are dry, bring the two bits together. Now it is actually kind of touch dry in two minutes, this stuff, but do they mean when it's dry, put them together, or do they mean after two minutes? You can't have both, can you? Anyway, I'm going to leave it for two minutes, and we'll see. Okay, so it's been two minutes. I'm going to try and put it together. One thing I had noticed, um, as you'd expect in a way, some of the glue had dripped through the hole. And I don't want to squash this down in a minute. And then fine, I'll stick the two halves of the dinghy together. So I've shoved a bit of paper towel in the, uh, in the hole. Hopefully that will do an, a good enough job of stopping it sticking. Right, what I'm going to do, I am putting this on my lid, uh, on my plug, just to start with, to help me get it all lined up, so I get it perfectly lined up on the hole. Then I'll, the plan is, I take the plug out then, then I can smooth it down and make sure it's stuck. Wish me luck. <laughs> That's not a good start. Okay. Feels promising. It says rub it down 
from the middle, working your way out with something hard and smooth like the back of a screwdriver. The only bit that's a bit of a pain is the fact that there's a bit of reinforcing on the inside of the hole which isn't quite the same size as the hole that's in the dinghy so there's already a kind of a step on this inner edge which I've got to kind of work it into it's looking good though well who knows if that's going to work but it seems okay I need to find something big and heavy now then to put on that just to keep it flat because apparently you have to leave it 24 hours before you use it and um, unfortunately the dinghy is not going to stay in our land for 24 hours but at least for the next hour or two it could stay flat couldn't it if I could find something to press it down with. <coughs> okay so it's the next day the patch looks to be stuck on really well so um, I'm just going to screw the valve back on and we'll pump it up and see what happens. First problem is finding the valve. Oh, there it is. I do do a proper tool for this, which I'm probably going to wish I had. Looks okay. It does say leave for 24 hours before you do this, and it's only been like 18 hours, but then it is warm. So, uh, anyway, that has blown up. There's no obvious sign of hissing and stuff. I'll get some soapy water in a minute and we'll see if it leaks. But I'll blow the other two up so we've got a dinghy. This is just water with washing up detergent in it. If there's any air at all, you'll see it blowing bubbles. But that is good. So, let me know if that's the right way to do it. I don't know, it's just the way I chose to do it. But if you're in the same position as us, you've got to replace the valve and you can't get the bit out, at least at the moment, that appears to do the job. It's good. Hopefully we can make use of it now on our holiday. So um, thanks for watching. This is Sailing with the Foxhall family. And next time you see this, hopefully, we'll be up some muddy creek somewhere. Have fun.